have worked for the government for a number of years prior to my illness. Um, after working for, for the government for this numbers, number of years, I was then home unemployed for, for a number of years. Um, then I became ill, was asked by the doctor to seek medical attention outside of Antigua. Previously, I wasn't aware that there was an area where I could go to medical benefit for assistance, but somebody did mention it to me. So I sent an application in, requested them to fund me, being that I wasn't working and didn't have the funds to do so. Um, that application was received. Um, at first, there was, they, they needed some clarification because of the nature of the illness, because there was a possibility that there would be something further than the inquiry. However, on the re looking at the application again, they did issue me that fund to go off for medical attention. I just had an eight-month-old baby girl. She's awesome. <laughs> so of course I had quite a few tests to be done. So even if I did all those, I could still carry in the, um, the receipt and they would refund me back the money. It was very good. I've done a lot of blood works. What I do, I submit my receipt to Medical Benefit and they look at them and they will pay you according to what the payments would be. Also, because I've been diagnosed with cancer, Medical Benefit has been a big help in that way because I have to go to Miami every six months to do a scan. And this scan is quite costly. So I submit my receipt along with letters from the doctors and Medical Benefits will also help me to travel to get these processes done. Based on our unaudited financial information for the period July to November 2016, the Medical Benefits Scheme cash collection was $29.8 million. During that period, MBS made payments directly to its beneficiaries to the tune of $10.1 million and further payments of $15.6 million in donations to the Ministry of Health to finance its various projects. The expenditure to the Medical Benefit Scheme beneficiaries was made up of pharmaceutical purchases totaling $7.5 million. The pharmaceuticals purchased were distributed at MBS's six pharmacies and covers medication that covers 11 chronic non-communicable diseases. Another $2.5 million was disbursed to MBS beneficiaries in the form of financial assistance for local and overseas treatment and in claim refunds for diagnostic tests and doctor's visits. Donations to the Ministry of Health included payments of $7.5 million to the Mount St. John's Medical Center for the hospitalization care of MBS beneficiaries and an additional $4 million was expended to pay the Mount St. John's Medical Center building loan and to purchase equipment for the hospital. Also between July and November, the Medical Benefit Scheme spent approximately $1.5 million on behalf of the Ministry of Health to support the Cuban Medical Brigade. The monies were used to pay salaries, accommodation, and travel overseas for the contracted Cuban healthcare workers housed at the Mount St. John's Medical Center and in Barbuda. Broadly and generally speaking, there are five categories under which an individual can be eligible for benefits from the scheme. The first category are individuals who are minors and individuals who are 70 and over. These individuals, once they're registered, they're immediately considered beneficiaries. Individuals from 16 to 20 who are still in school are required when they register to present a letter from the school stating that they are indeed students. Once they come in and register, they are immediately beneficiaries. Individuals who may be physically or mentally impaired and are unable to work 
Once they come in to register, what we require is a letter from the doctor stating their condition and that they're immediately considered beneficiaries. Individuals who are not in school and are not yet employed, if they want benefits, they are required to come in, register as voluntary, whereby they pay $20 a month. You pay $20 a month for six months to gain benefits, or if you are already previously a beneficiary, you pay $20 a month continuously to maintain your benefits. For individuals who are employed or self-employed, we require that you pay six months contributions into the scheme. After the six months are paid and expired, then you are considered a beneficiary of the scheme. The first time I registered was about 30 years ago. After leaving high school, my first job was with the government. Although it was 30 years ago, because the process was simple, I think I can remember. You had to go into the office, you fill out some forms, and then, yeah, there you go, you were all registered. <laughs> Very easy. The second time was a re-registration. I did not have to go into the office at this time. Um, I think what happened is because it was crunch time, it was coming to an end and medical benefit really wanted to get things sorted out. So what happened, they sent some employees over to the bank and we were all registered at the bank. We did not have to go to the office, which was quite nice. For an individual coming in to be registered with the scheme, what we require is that they work with their valid passport along with their old medical benefit card if they were issued one before. For nationals whose passport may have been expired, what we require is your birth certificate along with two government issued IDs inclusive of your social security card. For minors, what we require is that the parent or legal guardian come into the scheme with the child's birth certificate or passport if the child has a passport along with the parent's passport. Again, if the parent does not have a passport, what we require is the parent's birth certificate along with the two government-issued IDs inclusive of the social security card. For citizens who have been naturalized, we require the same. However, if their passport is expired, we require their birth certificate, the two government-issued IDs along with the certificate of naturalization. For returning nationals who have been out of the country for more than three years, what we require is that they return and they're residing in Antigua for at least three months. Now, for non-nationals, there are two circumstances under which they may be registered with the scheme. The first circumstance is that they're living in Antigua, residing in Antigua for at least 12 consecutive months, whereby they come in with their passport to be registered with the scheme. The other circumstance is if they are employed, then we require their passport with the work permit stamp already put into the passport, along with their social security card to be registered. It was very easy, I must say. I went to the registration office and they, you know, have a, I had a seat, I got the form to fill out and before you know it I was up in front of the camera to take the photo and the good thing about it is that even if when you're taking the picture and you don't like the picture, they can, uh, you can redo it, you can even smile too, it's not one of those serious mugshot pictures so my card looked really really nice but it was very easy and then of course they have your contact information and they called you when the card was ready so it was very easy. Also during the period July to November, the Medical Benefit Scheme spent an additional $1.5 million to purchase pharmaceuticals for use at the various clinics around the Twin Islands. These pharmaceuticals were managed by the central medical stores on behalf of the Ministry of Health. Approximately $262,000 was spent in rental for the space that housed the central medical stores and an additional $39,000 was paid for security services for the building. During the period July to November 2016, the Medical Benefit Scheme also paid $236,000 in miscellaneous payments, which included rental for the Freetown Clinic, items to furnish the Cedar Grove Clinic, expenses for Epilepsy Week, freight costs for the Blood Mobile Unit, and Antigua and Barbuda's contribution to the World Health Organization. The miscellaneous payments also included meals and overtime costs for MBS staff to perform stock count at the Mount St. John's Medical Center and professional architectural services at the Hamcom building. 
And that's your snapshot of how your MBS contributions were spent during the period July to November 2016. I've been a hypertensive a patient for a number of years. I do have like high cholesterol, those sort of things. So I utilize the monthly where I get monthly prescription from the medical benefit based on my issues with these conditions. It has benefited me greatly in that in the case where I was unable to provide the funds, in this case to go to Trinidad to see a heart specialist for my condition, where I was unable to provide the funds, Medical Benefit did finance that full trip, that, that expense of paying the medical bills for that. So the only thing I had to do was to find the ticket and a boarding Medical Benefit took care of all the other charges. Just for the registration at the hospital itself, instead of having to pay that lump sum of money that they were asking for, I had to just pay a minimum of $500, which was um, easy, you know, at reach, and I didn't have to worry about the bill after I've had um, my daughter. So that, I can say, is a plus. Yeah, so I'm glad that I've been contributing. It benefited me greatly, especially at this time, where I have to have chemo. If I had to purchase the chemo on my own, I don't think I'll be able to do so. So what my doctor has done is to tell medical benefit the chemo that I need and they will, they will give it to us where he can administer it free of cost. For businesses and self-employed individuals who wish to be registered with the scheme, what we require is that the owners come in with their passport along with the registration certificate given from intellectual properties. There's a form to be filled out and once that is complete, the process is seamless and simple. According to the MBS Act of 2010, subsection 32, every employee, self-employed individual and employer must be registered with the scheme. According to subsection 33, every employer has an obligation to ensure that his employees are registered with the scheme. Upon receiving the medical benefit card, you're eligible for reimbursement from certain doctor visits, certain procedures. You're also eligible to get um, Mount St. John's basket of services. And if you are diagnosed with any of the 11 covered diseases that medical benefit takes care of, you can get free medication from the pharmacies. Every individual must have his or her own medical benefit card. If the individual is a minor or a spouse, they cannot be allocated to your benefits. They must have their own card to receive benefits from the medical benefit scheme. Every employer must be registered with the scheme. This is to facilitate the monthly remittances of the employee's contributions to the scheme. The fact that I was able to go to them in the sense where I was in need of assistance and getting that assistance. I have a classmate there, she's very very nice so even I'm able to see a warm friendly face it just makes me even comfortable to ask certain questions and I don't feel like it's business. I feel like I know her so it's really easy, really easy. I don't really visit them often but when I do is to collect my checks after they've looked at the receipts that I have submitted or invoices I go in three weeks later and I collect my check. Remember, the scheme works towards improving the overall health care and well-being of the country.